This is Heresy, the miniature wargaming talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to equip and use Legions Astartes Dreadnoughts for Legions Imperialis. We're going to be talking about the three Legions Astartes Dreadnought options that there are today, the best weapon options for them, and also how to use them in your games as well. But before we do that, if you enjoy the content, please do like and subscribe. If you've got any thoughts as you watch the video, leave the comments down below on YouTube. And if you'd like to support the show, you could make your hobby purchases from JustPlayGames.uk, who have a full range of games workshop, full range of models, hobby, all the things that you could possibly want as well. And now, on with the show. So let's start off by talking about the Contempt of Dreadnought. The Contempt of Dreadnought's been out since the Legion's Imperialis box come out, and it's got two weapon options. So one is the Twin Link LAS Cannon, which is your standard, accurate LAS Cannon profile. It's a really solid stat line. And it's pretty much the obvious standout ch choice on this model. Uh, it kills tanks. It's reasonably good at killing infantry just because of its range and it hits on a four. And it's got accurate as well. You know, it's just generally a good gun. The other option is the Kerry's Assault Cannon. Now, this is 10-inch range, one shot, five plus one AP, light AT and rapid fire. So it's kind of like a short-ranged auto cannon with, you know, one shot and rapid fire instead of two shots. So in equivalent terms, in, in terms of averages, rapid fire is the same average number of hits as just hitting on one better. So this is like one shot, four plus to hit, one AP, light AT, effectively. Pretty weak stats. Generally, this gun, unfortunately, you know, probably could have stood to have like one more shot or be a longer range. It's just not very good at all. You know, you might as well just bring the last cannon and shoot at infantry without the one AP, but hit more often because it's accurate and get an extra 12 inches of range while you're at it. That's the thing that really kills this weapon. The stat line would maybe be okay, slightly better than the last cannon at killing infantry and like things if the range wasn't so short. But as it is, I definitely can't recommend this weapon. Now, you do just get them on the sprue. You don't really have an option of either of those two, these two weapons. So, you know, if you can convert more last cannons, if you can get some nice little 3D printed accessories or something, I would go with the last cannons, personally. The Contempt of Dreadnought does also come with a nice little point defense bolter, which is great as well. And it's got five close assault factor, no matter which weapon you take, because it does have that big meaty power fist on it as well. So that's really good stats, you know, for what you're getting. You're getting a good gun, a las cannon that can reach out and blow up, you know, enemy, enemy armor or just generally shoot anything. Plus five close assault factor. And on top of that, it's got a four plus save. It's got the armoured rule, because you can hurt it with light weapons, but it's got a 4 plus save, so light weapons go down to 0 AP, which I think is every light weapon in the game is already 0 AP anyway, and you get a re-roll. So 75% chance of saving against light weapons, and a 6 plus invulnerable save. Now that's largely pointless in a lot of ways, mostly because there's very few weapons in the game with greater than a 2 AP modifier, certainly that will be shooting at Dreadnought, so the invuln's a bit wasted. But they are fairly tough. You know, you do have to shoot them with real guns in order to kill them because they got a 4 plus save, and that makes them pretty decent. Particularly because they're only 17 and a half points a model, or 15 points when you add extra models to the unit. They're just generally excellent all around. You know, they provide good firepower. They've got great melee. It's a survivable body for its cost. You know, it's got a 4 plus save. It's got that armored occasionally it might get a 6 plus save if you get shot by a turbo laser destructor. It's it's just a good unit. It's good as a linebacker. This is the way I like I like to use it. So something that can stay further back in your lines, protecting your juicy target. So I like to run Kratos, and I run these sort of near or around or sometimes actually just as a screen for the Kratoses because these can still shoot things with the last cannons, still be effective in putting some firepower on the battlefield, and if someone wants to try and jump my Kratoses, they can either get in the way or they can fight in melee against the things that are trying to fight the Kratoses as well. So I think these are really good in that role. They're also good as quite a, just a general purpose midfield unit. You know, they're good in close combat. They're, you know, reasonably tough for their points. They've got a good gun. They are a little bit slow getting there because they only move five inches, particularly if you want to shoot on the way in. But they're really good at that as well. They're just a solid unit for their points. They are a little bit vulnerable to high shot light anti-tank weapons, so auto cannons are good at taking multiple dreadnoughts off the field, but 
even if your opponent is shooting at them with these more optimal weapons for killing them, they're still not super expensive for what they are. So I really love Con- Contempt of Dreadnoughts. I think they're a great unit, and you should definitely use them in your armies. So next up, we've got the newly released, at this point anyway, Doredio Dreadnought. Now, this has got two weapon options as well. It can either have the Plasma Cannonade, which is 14-inch range, two shots, four plus to hit, two AP, and light AT, unfortunately light AT. Two AP uh, is pretty good, um, but it's only got two shots on a 14-inch range. So when we look at this versus the Auto Cannon, which we'll look at in a sec, it's about 9% better against 5% 5 plus save targets. And it's about 15% better against 4 plus save targets, you know, assuming they're not vehicles, so things like Terminators or other walkers. But it's 10% worse than the auto cannon as soon as a shooter targets in cover, and that 2 AP doesn't matter anymore. And it's got a couple of inches less range. Now, the auto cannon, on the other hand, is a fairly standard auto cannon profile, except it's got a 16 inch range and it's accurate. So it's just a, an upgrade versus the plasma most of the time against non well all of the time against non infantry units because that both of their APs go down to zero except this hits more often so five plus with a reroll is a fifty five percent chance to hit so a bit better than the four plus and it's got an extra two inch range not a massive upgrade but you know that is still ten percent more hits when you think about it so it, it you know it's a bit bigger than it might look at first it's better than plasma in a lot of other situations as well so if you're shooting at a 6 plus save target, like uh, Solar Auxiliary Infantry, or if you're shooting at Infantry in cover, it's better as well. So they're both okay guns. They're both a bit short range. The Auto Cannon is probably a tiny bit better on balance of things against the things you're going to shoot a lot of the time. So if you're trying to shoot uh, Flyers out the sky, which we'll talk about in a second, this is going to be better at that because they, they are vehicles. If you're shooting at infantry a lot of the time, this is going to be better as well. I think this is going to be in its beneficial, at shooting its beneficial targets more often than the plasma will. But ultimately, that's going to vary from game to game. The two inch range does give it a tiny edge as well, but it is only two inches, which often won't make any difference. So I would say if you were really min maxing, you would just take auto cannons and no plasma, probably. But the difference is so small. And the difference in target types that you're going to be shooting could vary so much from game to game. I think you could easily use either of these, which is great because they both come in the box. And again, you don't have a choice of which of these weapons. You just get two of each in a box. So you could find some 3D printed parts or something to upgrade them all to auto cannons. But personally, especially if you're not playing super seriously, I would just mix these together or run them in separate units or whatever you want to do. But the real star of this vehicle or this walker i should say is the aeolos missile launcher so this is a 25 inch range which is really big one of the higher range non-titan weapons in the game one shot hits on a four and two ap nice little uh nice little stat line there and the big thing is it's got skyfire so in addition to the fact this has already got a main gun this dreadnought the plasma or auto cannon it's also got this as well which is cool now you can use skyfire to shoot at a secondary target if you want so your main weapon can shoot something on the ground while the missile launches, launches shoot something in the air, or you can just shoot all these things at air things. Now, that I think that's a really good gun, and it does give the Dreadnought quite a few shots. Given that it's 21.25 points a model, or 20 when you take some extras, and it does also come with a little tiny point defense gun as well, I think these are quite good value. It comes with a tracking array, which is the main thing that makes it interesting for me. So when you're on first fire, all of your guns get Skyfire which means that all of a sudden you've got the missile launcher and the auto cannon or the plasma if you're in range, which you won't always be with them, admittedly. But it does give you quite a lot of potential anti-air firepower. And sometimes with anti-air, you just need to deny an area. So you just need to stop a Thunderhawk, drop an ace assault infantry on top of something important, maybe. It's got a four plus save and it's armored. And this has actually got a five plus in one, which is better than the other dreadnoughts as well. So you think you might see some use out of that more often. If people really want to get rid of their EDOs for anti-air, they might shoot them with two AP weapons. And in this case, they're not going to kill them as easily. These are really good. They give you general fire support and anti-air cover at the same time. And because of the way the Skyfire rules work, that also makes them really good at Overwatch because they only get minus one to hit. And they've got quite a few 
shots between the different weapons and the little point defense gun as well. So they're good in Overwatch just for shooting anything. They're bringing anti-air onto the battlefield without you having to pay points for tarantulas or something. Now, tarantulas are great at anti-air and they're cheap, but these guys can shoot everything else as well. You know, if your opponent doesn't bring air or wants the air powers dead, these can do lots of other things too. I really like them. Does a lot for its points, plays multiple roles well. It's a really good unit. And I think this is my favorite dreadnought. This is the way I'm going to get anti-air into my armies. And I think also as a final point, though, very important to note, this is not a boat. It's a dreadnought, I promise. And last but not least, certainly not least in volume, is the Leviathan Dreadnought. So this has got two options as well. It's got a Storm Cannon, 10-inch range, 2 shots, 5 plus, 1 AP, light AT, rapid fire. This is the stat line that maybe the Kerry's Auto Cannon was missing. It might be a little bit much on, I don't know. This is the stat line that maybe the Kerry's was missing. You know, it's a it's a good gun. It's a good, solid gun. It's particularly good when you use it in multiples. As I said earlier, Dreadnoughts are particularly vulnerable to this kind of weapon. So when you're fighting versus enemy Dreadnoughts or enemy infantry in the open, or when you're fighting against Sentinels or something like that, it's just a good solid gun. It's big drawback, obviously, is it's 10-inch range. It's not very big. But because you get quite a few Dreadnoughts in a unit, you know, four, six, eight, something like that, this is quite a lot of shots. And so it's pretty good at killing those kind of units. The other option is the Cyclonic Meltaland. So 6-inch range, 1-shot, 4-plus to hit, 3 AP, anti-tank and demolisher. So very, very short range, almost melee, but very powerful. So scary for armor when used in multiples because every hit is you know borderline going to be a kill or mostly going to be a kill. It's also the demolisher rule is really good as well because... When you've got lots of demolisher shots like this, you can actually kill buildings very easily. So a unit of eight of these can walk up to a building, shoot it, and have a fairly decent chance of taking it out or at least knocking a good chunk off it as well. So both of these weapons are good, although they are very different. I think they, you know, you definitely don't want to mix and match them. You definitely want to pick one of these for the unit because it will change the way you use the unit. You know, whether you use it for its firepower or whether you actually just throw it in close and, and do something different, and it will change what the opponent is scared of this unit with as well. You know, the Melter Lance is going to worry vehicles or things that are safe from getting too close, whereas the Storm Cannon is the other way around. Now, at 18.75 or 17.5 points a model, when you add them as extras, they are still reasonably cheap. They, you know, the Dreadnoughts are a bit more expensive than, than infantry, but you get quite a lot for that but they look a lot more attractive than vehicles when you look at how easily things like a Predator can die for, for twice the points cost of this. So I, I think Dreadnoughts are very well costed generally. It also comes with a Volkite Caliber, which is a deceptively good weapon for like a secondary gun. So 12-inch range, which matches the range of the Storm Cannon quite nicely. One shot, four plus to hit, light, accurate, and deflagrate. So between accurate and deflagrate, reasonably good averages of getting, you know, one one hit on an infantry unit per Dreadnought with this. You add that to the Storm Cannon, that's a lot of shooting your way through enemy infantry if you catch them in the open. And this doesn't really have any uh, drawbacks to shooting things that are in cover because you're not losing any AP. They're just getting the cover save. But one of the big reasons you bring the Leviathan over some of the other more, well, certainly the Contemptor, which has got a bit, bit of a better gun, is the Leviathan Siege Claw. This has got 4 AP and Rend, so this is a 5 close assault factor unit with Rend, and it's also got Wrecker 2. It'll murder most things in assault. It'll be even Stevens with an Ogryn that charges it, which is, uh, you know, still very in favor of the Ogryn given the points cost, but, you know, we know that they're silly in combat, and these are really good as well. One thing to remember, though, you can't fight against infantry in an occupied building with this. It's a mistake uh, I see people make quite a lot with the rules, so... Unless you're infantry, you can't assault other infantry in buildings, and Leviathans are no different. Because of that, there's also an open rules question as to whether you can actually use Wrecker versus an occupied building in melee, because technically you can't activate when you're in, uh, in, in melee with the building. So there is a bit of an open rules question as to how that works. I'm not going to go into all the details now, but just bear it in mind. So if that gets fixed, this is great. If it doesn't get fixed, you would maybe speculatively use this just to sort of deny buildings that you don't want your opponent to be in. 
But either way, it's just a great weapon in combat. You know, you can uh, beat up opposing knights, potentially, with a couple of these, or have a good chance of even the first one, potentially, you know, rolling high and winning. You can pretty much kill anything in combat with them. Now, they've got the same save stat line as a Contemptor, though. I guess that's what we get for Abstraction. At this scale, you'd expect it to be a little bit tougher. I would have probably liked these to be 3 plus save and, and a few more points. And maybe the guns be be a little bit better, because I think they're uh, they're quite a presence on the table in Heresy, but I like them anyway. They're still good as a linebacker like the Contemptor is. You know, they're really good at protecting tanks from assault by counter-assaulting. They've got them really good assault cannons or storm cannons, rather, if any infantry are getting too close. And they can also try to shoot down um, planes as well, potentially. So they do quite a lot in that role. And they're good to exert a zone of control somewhere on the battlefield where you need it as well, because they are quite a scary and powerful unit within their range. But it's going to be a small range because they're slow, and the weapon range is slow as well. But all in all, also another great unit. So in summary, all three of these Dreadnoughts are great. I want to put all of these in my army. Certainly Doredios will go in first. Contemptors are already in my armies as well. And Leviathans are probably the one I'm going to use the least, but it's not because they're not good. It's just because I love the other two so much. I will definitely use them though because Leviathans are cool. Other than the Kerry's Assault Cannon, all the weapon choices on these are good as well, which is a nice place to be in. Not something we often get with uh, a lot of Games Workshop games. Often there's just too many standouts, so it's nice to be able to make some choices there based on the info I've given you. They are somewhat slow dreadnoughts, not easy or often possible to transport, and they don't walk very fast, but, you know, that's the one drawback in an otherwise excellent unit. They're tough enough for their points, decent saves, not expensive, you know, per hit point as well, and great weapon options, so couldn't want any more in, in a unit. I'm really happy with the way dreadnoughts have been designed in Legions Imperialis. I love using them on the table. And I'm looking forward to using new ones while they're out, now that they're out. And that's the end of the show. Thank you all for listening. Again, if you did enjoy the show, please do drop me a like and subscribe. And if you've got any thoughts or comments, drop them down below. I'll see you all soon, guys. Bye-bye.